Well, good morning, everyone. I begin by welcoming those of you who are in the uh, driving congregation. If you can hear me, uh, wave. I see hands coming out of the window. We're glad you're here. And we trust the service will be a blessing to you. Our King and Savior, Joy is nigh. Oh, come, let us adore him on this fourth Sunday in Advent. We begin by singing hymn number two, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, and we shall be singing stanzas one, five, six, and seven. <laughs> Oh, 
that princes will rule in justice. Each will be like a hiding place from the wind, a covert from the tempest, like streams of water in a dry place, like the shade of a great rock in a weary land. Then the eyes of those who see will not be closed, and the ears of those who hear will hearken. The mind of the rash will have good judgment, and the tongue of the scammerers will speak readily and distinctly. The fool will no more be called noble, nor the knave said to be honorable. 
For the fool speaks folly, and his mind plots iniquity to practice ungodliness, to utter error concerning the Lord, to leave the craving of the hungry unsatisfied, and to deprive the thirsty of drink. The knaveries of the knave are evil. He devises wicked devices to ruin the poor with lying words, even when the plea of the needy is right. But he who is noble devises noble things, and by noble things he stands. Then justice will dwell in the wilderness, and righteousness abide in the fruitful field. And the effect of righteousness will be peace, and the result of righteousness, quietness, and trust forever. My people will abide in a peaceable, peaceful habitation, in secure dwellings, and in quiet resting places. Here ends the first lesson. We proceed now to Holy Communion, uh, beginning with the Collect for the fourth Sunday in Advent. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O Lord, raise up, we pray thee, thy power, and come among us, and with great might succor us, that whereas through our sins and wickedness we are sore let and hindered in running the race that is set before us, Thy bountiful grace and mercy may speedily help and deliver us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, give us grace that we may cast away the works of darkness and put upon us the armor of light, now in the time of this mortal life, in which thy Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the quick and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost, now and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the epistle. The epistle is written in the fourth chapter of St. Paul's letter to the Philippians, beginning at the fourth verse. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Here ended the epistle. is written in the first chapter of John, beginning at the 19th verse. Glory to thee, O Lord. This is the record of John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elias? And he saith, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, No. Then said they unto him, Who art thou, that we may give an answer to them that sent us? What sayest thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Esaias. And they which were sent were of the Pharisees. And they asked him and said unto him, Why baptizest thou then? If thou be not that Christ, 
nor Elias, neither the prophet. John answered them, saying, I baptize with water. But there standeth one among you whom ye know not. He it is who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes latchet I am not worthy to unloose. These things were done in Bethabara, beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one the Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under conscious fire. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to death both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by prophets. And I believe in one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Well, a very, very uh, warm welcome to each one of you. We're so glad that you're here, and if you're visiting, we want you to know how especially glad we're we, that you're here with us. So uh, please uh, sign our register on the way out, and we'll be sure that we'll drop you a note this week um, recognizing your visit. Um, today it's uh, almost Christmas, isn't it? Uh, and I do want to encourage all to attend one of our Christmas services, either online or in person. Um, they will be at 5 o'clock, family service on Christmas Eve, and 10 o'clock, which will answer to our late night, the traditional late night candle service. And then on Christmas morning, there will be a service, an additional service uh, at 9.30. The two evening, uh, the two services on Christmas Eve, Eve will be live streamed on Facebook and later uploaded on YouTube. There will be in uh, church seating, uh, and there will be also um, parking lot. Uh, we'll have the parking lot congregation, which of course is broadcast over ninety eight point one. So lots of options, and if we uh, run out of space, we can open the yellow room downstairs for additional in-church space. So we hope you will be present or at least online for one or more of these services. I want to go on record of uh, thanking Priscilla Cashman for the lovely wreaths on the front door with apples in them. They look very Williamsburgish and very beautiful, very nice indeed. Thank you, Priscilla. Cashman for uh, your faithfulness in doing that for us. I received also a note and a card from um, Kent and Susan Lippum, uh, former members of our church who now live in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina, and they uh, wish all the congregation uh, the, uh, a very happy Christmas, and uh, they uh, very tantalizingly uh, sigh they're able to have seafood every night. So. Uh, making us envious, no doubt. Well, we stand and sing our next hymn, which is 
number four, Rejoice, Rejoice, Believers. <laughs> Before coming to Blue Ridge, I was at the state mental hospital in a neighboring, our neighboring state of Alabama. <laughs> I think how most people are not surprised. <laughs> but let me hasten to clarify. I did clinical pastoral training at this hospital. In any case, there was a curious phenomenon at this institution. From time to time, former residents would come to the gates and want to come back in. Why? Well, because for them the facility with its towering oaks and antebellum buildings represented security and peace. In short, it was home. Many had lived there for 30, 40 years. 50 years. Then a court case came along in the early 1970s which mandated patients be placed in the most least restrictive environment possible. As a result, many longtime residents were turned out. It was sad. There, behind those walls, behind those, that fence, those folks had garden plots, chickens, friends, a routine. Again, for them, it represented home. And what a beautiful and evocative word home is. 
Home is where the heart is. It has been said, Robert Frost wrote, home is a place where when you have to go there, they have to take you in. Unless, of course, that place is a state mental hospital in Alabama. Home is memories. It takes a heap of living in a house to make it home, said the poet Edgar Guest. And hope is a play at home is a place where people's thoughts turn at Christmas time. I'll be home for Christmas. You can plan on me. Please have snow and mistletoe and presents on the tree. Christmas Eve will find me where the love light gleams. I'll be home for Christmas, if only in my dreams. Crooned Bing Crosby. Home is indeed the place where people's thoughts turn at Christmas. Hence, scenes of hearth and home are often featured on Christmas cards. I am holding in my hand one mailed December 16, 1946, ten years before I was born. It was sent by my mother and father to my mother's people in Clinton, Mississippi, while my father was off at school at the University of the South at Sewanee. Looking at the picture on the front gives you the same feeling as Bing Crosby's popular holiday song. It tugs at your heart strings and creates a desire, a desire for home. A living room is pictured here are holly berries, garlands of evergreens, the luminous glow of candlelight, and snow outside a picture window. And to cap it off, there is an open Bible on a table. Visions of home, of safe havens, go back, I want to suggest, a long way. Isaiah, for example, in today's Old Testament reading, writes, And my people, it's God speaking here, shall dwell in a peaceable habitation and in sure dwellings and in quiet resting places. Then, as now, people longed for such places, even if it was in their dreams. More than that, Isaiah tells us that such dwellings are possible and will come. He further reveals who will bring them about, who will bring them to God's people. They will come about, he says, through a righteous king, a king who will sit on the throne of King David. Behold, a king shall reign in righteousness, and princes shall rule in judgment. We hear the prophet say in verse 1, but who is this king? Initially, it may have been King Hezekiah, the 13th king of Judah. He was a great improvement over his wicked father, King Ahaz, and did bring in a number of positive uh, reforms during his reign. Blessings followed, not the least being that the Assyrian armies who had laid waste the northern kingdom of Israel were turned back. They did not get as far as Jerusalem. The holy city was spared for a season. For a time being, God's people were able to dwell in safety. But the ultimate fulfillment of Isaiah's prophets, prophecy uh, lies somewhere in the future, 700 years in the future with the coming of another king, King Jesus. He is the righteous king par excellence, who, who causes God's people to live in peace and safety, not just for a few years, but for eternity. The blessing of secure dwelling places will come at his second coming, at our Lord's second coming in what is sometimes called the Messianic Age. 
But there are a number of places in the New Testament which suggest that we don't have to wait until then. I'm thinking, for example, of John 14, a chapter often read out at funerals. Here Jesus says, In my Father's house are many mansions, dwelling places in the RSV. More secure dwellings than those built by God himself can scarcely be imagined. Paul lays before us a similar vision in 2 Corinthians 5.1 where he writes, If our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and a house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. The tabernacle or tent of which he is speaking is our present body. Because we are frail children of dust, these dwellings often let us down and go away. But not so with those dwellings in God's space in heaven. <clears throat> Some of you have lost friends and loved ones over this past year. Christmas will be different this year. Let this thought sustain you. Your loved one, if he was a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, is in one of those safe dwellings prepared by God himself. Your loved one will celebrate with you the birth of the newborn king, but on another shore and in a greater light. So we don't have to worry about those who have gone before. They are in God's hands and in God's home. And one day, by God's grace, we shall occupy one of those mansions as well. That reminds me. I know a lady who is not sure she wants one of those mansions. Too many bathrooms to clean, she says. <laughs> well, we'll have to wait and see about that. Back to Isaiah's uh, words in today's passage. The full realization of the prophet's vision may lie ahead, either at our Lord's second coming or in heaven, but I want to suggest that anticipations of those safe dwellings of which he speaks can be found in the present. Yes, in our own neighborhood. Indeed, in our own home. Happy are the people whose God is the Lord, says the psalmist. His words are true. The home where God's precepts are known and followed, where the Bible is an open book, where people pray, say thank you, forgive, love unselfishly, is a happy place. It's not the number of gifts under the Christmas tree, what's parked in the garage, how many electronic toys you have at your disposal that makes a house a happy place. It is God's presence. And I might add, a cat or dog thrown into the mix doesn't hurt. Can you think of such a home? It might be one you remember from childhood. A home where there is warmth, peace, joy, love, a place that draws you, a place that is like a magnet, a place you want to go. I want to suggest that such homes are more than a blessing to those who occupy them, they also stand as a witness to those who look in from outside. They are beacons of light in a dark world. Such homes attract interest, cause people to ask, what do these people have that I don't? They may well serve as a door to evangelism. By all means, use whatever opportunity you are given. Yours can be such a home. With God's help, all things are possible. 
Don't leave the home of your dreams on the front of a Christmas card. Strive with God's help to make your home a place where the love light gleams, a place of warmth and cheer. In short, a real Christmas home. I close with a verse which turns this aspiration into prayer. God give us Christian homes. Homes where the Bible is loved and taught. Homes where the Master's will is sought. Homes crowned with beauty your love has wrought. God give us Christian homes. God give us Christian homes. B.B. McKinney. And so let us pray and work. And now to God the Father, by the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, be a crime that is most justly due, all might, majesty, dominion, power, and glory, world without end. Amen. At this time, our ushers will be going throughout the uh, parking lot, receiving alms and gifts. So, and those of you uh, inside the church here, all warm and uh, snug, I hope, uh, I I remind you that we have alms basins at the um, front entrance as well as in the uh, side uh, transept, the uh, south transept. So please uh, use them uh, on your way out. Also, I commend to you our online portal, which we, uh, which is doing very well. It's on our website, www.stlukesblueridge.org. And you may give uh, electronically, if you will, and thank all of those who are doing so. Uh, at this time, our organist will play uh, an interlude, and then we shall stand and sing the doxology. <laughs>
please be seated. I bid your prayers for all first responders, police officers, firefighters, and other emergency service personnel. I bid your prayers for physicians, nurses, and healthcare workers, and all who work for the common good. I bid your prayers for all teachers, school administrators, and students. And for these United States, that violence, hatred, and discord, and prejudice may be put to flight, and blessings of peace, civil discourse, goodwill, and trust may be restored. I bid your prayers for those in this parish family who celebrate birthdays this week. Celebrating is Barbara Norsworth on December 24th. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. I bid your prayers for those celebrating wedding anniversaries. This week, Bishop William and Martha Millsaps knit together in constant affection those who in holy wedlock have been made in one flesh. I ask you to remember those who have connections to this parish who serve in our military. Tyler Catron, Wesley Ryan McIntosh, Christian Wade, Newman, Kyle Morgan, Sam Sun, Matthew Muse, Jake Baker, Mark Rodriguez, and Jessica Wiley. I also ask you for those that have asked for prayers by name. Dean Lear, Andy Lee Kutcher, Sandra Morgan, Deacon Tony McConnell, Al Cash, Richard and Mercedes Masenko, Marty Newman, Elizabeth Ann White, Tim Higdon, Connie Parks, Doc Washburn, Rose Brass, Evelyn Bryan, Eileen Kerr, Putin Gwen Skelton, Jim and Ruby Tresca, Bruce Perkinshaw, Pat and Sharon Deering, Tom Hopper, Ann Thomason, Marilyn Seiler, Don Hess, Marilyn Kipnoy, Roseanne Johnson, and Jackie Lunkin, and those listed in our boat and family. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church. Almighty and ever living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty beseeching then to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Remember here, we also remember thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace to the fall of their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors 
and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in His holy ways. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God devoutly me. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and beware of manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly by our wrath and indignation against us. We embrace the disconnect. And our highway sorrow for these are the students, the remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is in all of us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, said, Forgive us all these paths, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who in heart and repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear with comfortable words our Savior Christ said unto all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Here also what St. Paul said, this is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sin. Lift up your hearts. We we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to our Lord God. He is me and I, so is He. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto Thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify Thy glorious name evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, Holy, suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offer a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. 
For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness, vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sin and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ that taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Continuing our prayer, we do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table. Thou art the same, Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our simple bodies may be made clean by his blood, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him,